Morning, good people, and welcome back to another edition of Sharp Solutions Carpet and Upholstery Cleaning, Supply, Install, and Repair. Now then, your first sights of this is, wow, that is a bad one. But it's not really. A lot of it is actually surface soiling. So it's kind of dry soiling. This place is a joinery company and it consists of this entrance hall here with a mat in. We've got two quarter landings, a main landing, the set of stairs, and then we've got one large office and three small offices. The great thing about this job is it is only kind of surface soiled it's not got greases involved so it's not going to take a lot of agitation most of this is going to come out with a vacuum in and then the ideal micro splitter solution will be bonnet mopping today is going to clean this up spick and span and make it look brand spanking new so stay with us on this you can see i'm just going to go around pointing out bits and bobs and areas where there's been teas and coffee spills i think we've got one serious stain which is like a green stain looks like maybe some sort of a health juice has gone over and a lot of the time they can be quite bad depending on what sort of colorings and things like that have been in it but i'm going to leave you to this bit guys and then i'm going to catch up with you in a bit been over this uh, door mat in here with the back and obviously for those that don't know how rib mat and soils it, uh, it does it lasts a long time but it, it really is quite difficult to clean because what happens is um, no matter what machine you use you know whether it be a truck mount low moisture you know uh, it's all down to suction and what happens with a vacuum is when you vacuum in, because it's got the ribs on it, your vacuum ports, they lose suction. So normally you have to get a crevice tool and go in the direction of the ribs, so of the lines. And, um, you know, it's painstakingly um, time consuming. So what I like to do is give a back and when you think it's clean, and this, believe it or not, you know, a couple of minutes ago, looks really clean. I'm now going over with the uh, agitation machine because you can see it's literally kicking off everything that was stuck down hard. It's almost like, it's polypropylene, but the way it's designed, um, it's stiff brushed, so it clings on. It's like Velcro almost, and trying to get those little particles to dislodge. It's quite difficult. Um, and these can be quite time consuming. Whenever I go out to quote, I always look at the condition of the matter because believe it or not, you can spend time that's not been really allocated on just backing rib matting alone. And when you get to things like coir matting, you know, it's, it, you may as well forget it and renew it because it's a natural fibre coir matting is and it's, uh, well, it's, it's, some call it coconut matting because obviously it is made out of um, natural fibres so that, you know, if anyone ever asks you to clean it it's best just beaten out and dry clean because um, you don't want to get any sort of benefits from wet cleaning it at all. You're just asking for trouble. But rib matting that is synthetic and in my personal opinion um, lasts a very long time. It's very hard wearing and that's why they put it into these commercial premises. Um, it's fantastic. It lasts years and years and years. Well, this is just a little tip for you guys. I've probably banged on too much there. <laughs> but now what I'll do is turn the back back on. Yeah, 
it's coming out all right guys it's coming out lovely in fact both of the officers have been done just that area there has been done so you can see the line that i've done to so this needs doing but um i've got a bit of a stubborn stain it's a colored stain i've got two of them now the solutions that i'm using today that are safe for these carpet tiles are not bringing it out so i'm going to hit it with a bit of a spotter and i'll give that literally 10 minutes to work because although some things work on contact others just need a little bit of dwell time so that's at this desk area here and we'll pop back to that in 10 minutes and give it a screw over okay guys so that is all this area done it's come up very very nice every room seeing we had that big traffic area there and you can see the happy line what i mean by the happy line is where i've stopped and this i'm happy with this has got to be done so that was here so you can see it's brought it out lovely and if i stand back just slightly you can see a massive difference well obviously the soiling has been removed okay so we've got this landing to do the stairs and then the entrance and we're done like a hot knife through butter I always go just around those. You see the little metal thing there that obviously the door bolt goes into. I always go around them now. I was once low moisture cleaning and I went over one of those and it caught the Iron Man pad. And boy did it give the machine a jerk. So I always go around them, make sure I get all the sides but never go over them. Obviously on a day like today, humidity is high. So although outside is about 28 degrees, 29 degrees, it's a very hot day today here in the UK. Summer months, um, humidity is very high. So that can fool you sometimes that like you can think, wow, with this sort of weather, it's going to be dry fast. And it's totally the opposite. It, it, uh, it needs ventilation and if you can put some down, some, uh, some fans, it needs really speed drying. What I'll do is go over with an Ironman pad. First of all, this top level agitation pad. Um, it's not at a CRB. It didn't need it. I'm using the scrub pad to do the agitation. Sometimes, depending on how thick the pile is, obviously this is carpet tiles, contract carpet tiles, so there is hardly any pile there. That's why it's fantastic for rotary cleaning. But if um, I'm doing domestics, residential, and we're working with a thick pile carpet, then I would probably whip out the CRB so I can just clean the sides of the fibres and release the soil in from deep down within the pile. With carpet tiles and tight piled carpet, you don't really have to worry about CRB in. Um, not if you're using obviously a scrub pad. I would CRB if you were just gonna come in, vacuum, and then use the power of heat to um, clean with because 
it can catch you out. You can do it once and think, wow, I didn't even agitate that. And it's caught absolutely lovely because there's so many different kinds of soiling. You know, the worst kind of soiling that really hangs on is your greasy soiling, so your restaurants and pubs or your kitchen areas through to the lounge. You know, that kind of area, um, the soiling gets matted with the oils and it just clings on to the fibres. So you can come on stock if you don't try and agitate that to uh, suspend the soil and ready for extraction. But the good thing about these Zebra microfiber agitation scrub pads is um, they're absorbent, you know? So not only are we agitated now, but you're cleaning at the same time. I go probably um, between 10 and 15 square meters before I either change the pad or I do sometimes rinse them so under hot water wring it out that kind of thing and then obviously re-dip it in your solution and um, away you go this is bonnet cleaning today because we're not using an encapsulation we're actually using a solution that does dry down to a neutral pH. It's called Restore It and it's from a place called Restore Mate. They do some fantastic solutions and equipment and training facilities. It's been going a long, long time and it's another good UK British manufacturer. Although they do carry world leading chemistry and machines as well. So if you are new to the industry and you're struggling on where to go, it is trade account only. You do not serve the direct public. So everything is checked out. So give them a shout and you will not be disappointed. And that that's come up absolutely lovely. I'm just going to open this door here so we can get the inside of that door because a lot of the time you get carbon marks. The corner of that needs getting, so I'm just going to open that toilet door and then we'll get that spick and span. So that's all been pre sprayed, ready to go. What a difference the deep vacuum makes, eh? Now what I am going to do on this one is I'm just going to let the pre spray sit for 5 to 10 minutes uh, without agitation because all this is, it's not greasy soiling, it's just top soiling so it's what's been carried through from the kind of warehouse floor which is grease free really, it's um, like I say it's a timber merchants kind of thing you know and um, it's coming up nice and easy with a solution of choice. So on this one, we're going to be using the Andeld Orbital and a microfiber scrub pad and then an Ironman pad, which is obviously 100% cotton. And then we're going to go over with that. So these should come up quite nice. You can see the magic of the actual solution working now, breaking down the soil in. If I was to just to give it a little bit of a shimmy here, let's say. You should start to see. There you go, that soil lifting. Okie cokey. Okay, so a couple of things just to show you that there's no soil in in there. That pad is very, very lightly soiled now. So the reason I like going for pads that are slightly bigger than the actual uh, head of the machine, whether it be 
um, an orbital or a rotary or a handheld rotary is because did you see when it was getting up against that edge there I can go up against the edge and not worry about marking because it's the pad that's going up towards the edge so that's that now I just got to do that rise I, I did miss that and I made a note of it but yeah now to touch that that's just touch damp not even that see the moisture on the hand very little should i say so that will dry very very fast as long as we keep some ventilation open wow it's all dungle people look at this it's come up absolutely gorgeous yes the client is going to be very very happy why wouldn't she be um the stairs look amazing, come up really, really well. The quarter landings look fantastic. As you can see, going up here, it's just popping with brightness. Now, you know that I'm a big lover of hydrogen peroxide, and sometimes I do spike solutions with that. Today, the micro splitter of choice was Restore It, which I mentioned earlier in the video. I did go ahead and spike that with hydrogen peroxide because I don't only deep clean, but sanitize as well, and that's what you will get from a hydrogen peroxide it'll also take out any of those teas coffee spills or colorings it is absolutely fantastic to use in a professional situation all of the teas and coffee stains around the kitchen area came out really really nice that green stain that we had after a couple of treatments, it wasn't actually hydrogen peroxide that I ended up using on that. We did obviously, first of all, mixed into the solution, but it only lightened it slightly. So I had to go back in with an ammonia um, solution because that works a little bit harder. I think it knocks around a 13, 14 pH. So if you leave that to dwell, it will work its magic. And then I took that out with a hand pad the great thing about ammonia is as it dries it starts to self neutralize and it dries at about a 6.5 and a 7 ph so there is no need for rinsing with that these carpets have dried out absolutely fantastic now the solution that we use is obviously dried down to a neutral ph of around a 6.5 or 7 so there was no need to actually acid rinse these carpets at all although when we use in the scrub pads it is dipped in hydrogen peroxide so if the solution of choice was a little bit higher on the ph that would manage it and bring it back down when we clean either commercial or domestic we leave shark teeth which is done with wand or we leave head marks that is done with either an orbital or a rotary now we offer the customer the chance for us to groom it out or leave it in because believe it or not especially in commercial situations a lot of customers like to leave the wand marks or swirls in because it shows their staff or if they're renting it out it shows their potential new occupants that it's been professionally cleaned so till the next time guys take care of yourselves and i'm going to see you in the next